Hi, this is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast. Last Friday, I made a decision, kind of spur of the moment. I was thinking about it for about a week, and I decided on my Story Hoarder Substack, that's the space where I've been sharing my fiction week by week. If you go to storyhoarder.substack.com, every Friday I was been sharing a brand new short story or flash fiction um, piece. But last week I decided, you know what? That novel that I have been sitting on forever, Girl Unplugged, that uh, I took through Pitch Wars in 2016, I'm that's it. I'm just going to start sharing it on Story Hoarder. So for um, Valentine's Day weekend, since there's a big, crushy, romantic sort of typical YA teen lovey-doveyness in it. I was like, this this feels like the right time. Friday, I shared chapter one. Uh, Saturday, I shared chapter two. And Sunday, I shared chapter three, being the first sort of grand opening of Girl Unplugged to the World Wide Web. And then uh, every Wednesday now, I'm going to share another chapter until the entire novel is completed. So I've been really excited about it. I don't know why all of a sudden I just decided it needed to happen, but it's kind of like the entire philosophy behind my sub stack, which is Story Hoarder, um, meaning that I have been hoarding all my stories. I keep writing, 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 but not sharing them. And I said uh, on the first post, you know, if I'm really going to be real about releasing the story horde, I've got to let out some of the novels. And Girl Unplugged is probably the most infamous one um, because it it has been, pieces of it have been on the internet. Those first three chapters have been on Wattpad for a while, or at least some version of them have been on Wattpad for years. There's been, there's a pitch on the Pitch Wars site, uh, plus... I don't remember how much was on that site. If it was, I don't think it was a full chapter. I think it was like first page or something. So anyway, I started to do this. And, um, and so if you go to, uh, if you're listening to this podcast when it airs, uh, by this week, we have four chapters up of, um, Girl Unplugged on, on the website. And I plan to do chapter five next week and continue until the book's complete. And then a funny thing happened this week. Right before I was about to post and and publish chapter four, news came out from Pitch Wars, which is, if you're not familiar with Pitch Wars, I've spoken about it before. It's a contest that started, I think, in 2012. It was a Twitter focus. It was on Twitter, basically. It was the main focus of how you would find out about it. Um, but they did have a website because they hosted a contest annually. I think it was just once a year at Pitch Wars where an author could apply, send in a piece of their work and a a query letter to a number of volunteer mentors, which were people who were either previously published authors or people in the publishing industry of some sort, to work with them on their book for a couple of months before there was a date set, you know, at the end of the couple of months, having that pitch and that that beginning part of the book up on the Pitch Wars site for agents to see and then say, yeah, I'm interested, send me, send me your work. So it was a really great opportunity. And I was lucky enough with the book Girl Unplugged to, um, to get picked by a mentor uh, Austin Aslan, who is a middle grade writer. And he was wonderful because the, one of the books that he had already published by that point was very similar in tone and theme to what I was writing in Girl Unplugged. It was just like a match made in heaven. So he knew a lot of the things that I was trying to accomplish, but also had experience with getting a book out into the world. So, um, and without Pitch Wars, Stop Writing Alone doesn't exist because Pitch Wars was really the first time that I had stopped writing alone, that I had taken this big project and really gone one-on-one with another writer uh, intensely over it chapter by chapter. And it was a, it was an incredible experience for me. Um, I think I've 
gone over it a number of times and on the podcast that you know basically just life got in the way at the at the end of pitch wars right about the time that i was um setting up that page for agents that i just had to handle stuff at home right so um so that didn't go anywhere for a while but anyway so so girl unplugged for me has this deep connection to pitch wars (laughs) And here I go last Friday making the decision to release it out into the world for free because Story Hoarder, uh, the Story Hoarder Substack is completely free. It's not a paid subscription at this point. And the news comes out this week that Pitch Wars is ending. Pitch Wars and hashtag Pit Mad, that's their uh, Twitter-based pitch contest that they run. They are no longer going to be continuing. And it got me thinking when I read that post about what I'm doing with my fiction and what message I may or may not be sending to other writers. And I wanted to just take a moment this week to talk about why I'm sharing my fiction for free, why I maybe shouldn't be sharing all my fiction for free, but I'm still going into this, knowing this, and I want to um, sort of just have this conversation so that somebody doesn't just blindly follow what I'm doing without thinking about the potential consequences. And the reason why this idea of uh, the issue of giving my work out for free comes to light right now is because of that idea that Pitch Wars was really all volunteer-led. And I think that that has always been um, a, a beautiful thing an absolutely beautiful thing that everybody that was there offered, but also what made it so incredibly difficult. Because at the end of the day, these people were working their butts off, like a full-time job, if not more, um, for not nothing, really. I mean, I, I guess you could say they got some exposure, you know, and, and made connections with other writers and things like that, but um, it really was a labor of love. So, so why am I doing this? And, and I, I'm saying that I, I'm concerned that part of that issue that, that Pitch Wars is, is gone now is because if it's just volunteer and then things are getting very hard, um, you got to weigh the value and everything, right? And what, what are they getting from it ultimately at the end now? Um, so for me. The whole idea behind Story Hoarder, as I said from from the beginning, was that I wasn't doing anything with my fiction anyway. (laughs) I was just hoarding it. So I figured it was time to share it. But in case it's not clear um, to to the writers out there listening what my intentions are, I wanted to sort of be a little bit uh, transparent with it just so that you can see that I am thinking about all the various values here. So first and foremost, you know if you've been listening along that Happy Campers is coming up. Uh, The Stop Writing Alone 52 Club is coming up. These are both paid events and paid um, memberships. So I am making money through my creativity and writing and my content creation through those events, right? And being that person um, that shows up for all of the writers. And and my writing is very much tied into that. I am not able to really do all of this if I'm not in the trenches writing with everyone else. Um, also, when it comes to the substack of it all, my plans are to create a Stop Writing Alone substack. So Story Hoarder has become um, my place to sort of play with the platform, learn how to sort of navigate it, and in the end then translate that into a space where I will be making money from my writing because substack is all writing, right? Um, but it is going to just be at on a different content level so that my fiction at least at this point, will remain free because the value that I'm getting from it is learning the platform, 
also uh, adding some some validity to my uh, title as writer for anybody that's been doubting, you know, <laughs> like what she's writing, where is she writing? I don't see her anywhere. Well, here it all is, everyone. You can read all my writing now. Um, so I'm getting lots and lots of value from it. And, and I want to say this because when I started out writing, and again, I was like, really like totally naive, totally brand new to everything, came out of teaching, just started blogging. I was writing, I was like a full-time freelance writer. My, I would wake up in the morning and I would just start writing articles and stories and just be posting all day. I was working for, at one point I was working for four different websites. Uh, two of them needed daily content and I was just churning out, churning out writing like crazy. Um, and I was doing it all for nothing. And at the time, many writers were saying, you should, you have to stop giving out your content for free. And I was like, yeah, but who am I? Who, who am I to get paid for any of this? And uh, I just didn't, I didn't get it back then. And, and I'm, I think that conversation has been had a lot and that creatives are getting it now. But in case you are finding yourself churning out and giving out your work for free with nothing in exchange, please take a moment and find your value, right? So there's the, it, it could look like on paper that I'm doing it again, right? That I'm writing on this story hoarder site giving out all of my fiction and not getting paid for it. But it's to a point of, it's kind of like my training, my own personal training to learn Substack so that I can translate it into a, a profitable business. Um, maybe by the end of the year, we'll see. I'm not sure if I'm, if, well, I, I think I probably could get a stop writing loan Substack, down, you know, up and running by the end of the year. But I haven't set a, a schedule for myself just yet because I'm deep, deep in in Happy Campers and Fifty Two Club prep. Um, so, so that's my my big topic of the week is why am I doing this for free and why I shouldn't be, <laughs> but why I am anyway, right? So I'm doing it for free because I it's part of a, a long term plan for me uh, to to actually get to a profitable point. Um, why I shouldn't be doing it for free is because every sing single thing that we put out there has value and we can't over, you know, undersell ourselves as we are providing content for other platforms. This is part of the reason I spoke to you at the beginning of the year, why I'm really feeling the pull to get off of social media where I'm just giving content to somebody else all the time. Um, but, you know, again, the reason I'm doing it anyway is because it's part of a larger, larger plan. And another aspect of that larger plan is that I have sort of released the, um, I don't know, I guess it would be a desire, release a desire to be traditionally published with, well, at least with this book, with Girl Unplugged. It, it, it feels like it was written in a different time and maybe that's just a personal thing, but I feel like if Girl Unplugged gets, uh, or I should say when Girl Unplugged gets itself into print form, it makes the most sense that it would be self-published anyway. And once I made that decision, I was no longer bound to it can't be anywhere, um, you know, no more rules, right? I'm setting the rules now. So there's, you know, part of the long-term plan is once Girl Unplugged has gone out on Story Hoarder in completion, uh, then I can, you know, get it published uh, all bound in one book for anybody that wants to uh, read it in that way rather than, on the internet, chapter by chapter. I, there's just so much that I'm learning in this process and I'm really excited about it, aside from the platform of Substack, but also learning, you know, what is it like to really serialize something and just release uh, a book in pieces? I had an incredible experience um, 
back in, I think it was the 90s, early 2000s, when Stephen King released uh, Green Mile, I happened to be working in the Staten Island Mall. And and part of my job was delivering uh, food to all different people in the mall. And so I was always passing the bookstore. And that was my bosses knew it was just a nightmare because if I had to deliver anywhere near the bookstore, it took me a little bit longer to get back to work. And when Green, the Green Mile started to get published, I still remember the, the absolute incredible excitement that I got when I would walk by and see that the next book, the next section of Green Mile had been released. And just living through that, that time of these pieces of story and anticipating it. I mean, you guys all know that I love television, right? So I'm very, I love all this episodic stuff. Um, but thinking that I could be that for somebody is also really a lot of fun for me that somebody else might be uh, excited to see in their inbox. Oh my goodness, the next chapter of Girl Unplugged is here. Um, There's just something so exciting about that delayed gratification, especially in this time of of binge watching things. I mean, those of us who are voracious readers, we've been binge reading all, all our lives, right? We've had that book. Uh, you get the book, you sit down, no one sees you for a day and a half because that's it, you're in. Um, that, that experience of reading The Green Mile was the first time that somebody sort of put shackles on me and made me wait. And it was just really, really uh, loads of fun. So I kind of, I, I think I'm excited about that aspect of it as well. So, um, so yeah, but I want everybody, if you are looking at my model and saying, oh, well, Nicole's sharing her fiction for free. So yeah, I'm going to do that too. If, you, if in some way I have given you permission to go out there and just throw your work out there without getting anything in exchange, I wanted to, to come out here and just let you know that I am not doing this without uh, a an exchange in mind, right? So right now my fiction is out for free because where I am monetizing is in a space of the person who's going to give writers support. I am using that as the space to, to bring um, the money in in exchange for my writing, my showing up as a writer, my showing up as a writer a coach, a creativity coach, and all of those things. So don't give out your one thing. If that, if your path to payment is your fiction, do not give it away for free. That is the moral of this story. <laughs> and to that end, uh, the signups for Happy Campers have started. Um, I don't think I talked about price last week. If you are brand new to Happy Campers, um, the price right now for the two months of daily live calls and and community support all the way through March and April is uh, $444 for the whole two months. So you would be getting nine weeks of me and community Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Like it's, and every single Monday is the goal setting. Every single Tuesday, we have multiple write-ins. Every single Wednesday is an, a casual chat on whatever we need to talk about. Thursday, I mean, this, the springtime is really, really incredibly valuable because every single Thursday, you're in a critique partnership. Um, paired up with somebody else in the group you you know we basically model it so that each week you get your partner and then you exchange your work during the week and we use the time on the Thursday night meetings to have that face-to-face um, feedback call we go into a zoom room we do the breakouts and everybody has their own personal space to break out and have that chat uh, and then for every single Friday we have a writing prompt party so every single Friday you will be creating a brand new story uh, within the space of an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, so you just get loads and loads of content. Uh, you know, if you are looking for more stories, more stories, ideas, more uh, inspiration, all of that, it's just really intense. It's, 
uh, I love it. I'm really excited that that we're going back into it. Um, and then also, I, I don't think I discussed this enough, but once you have done the happy campers, if you return to the happy campers, um, you always get an extreme discount. Like my return happy campers are not paying anywhere near $444 because um, there's, you know, it's, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a because because I love my people and I just think it's just wonderful to have everybody back. So if uh, you join Happy Campers, you will always get a discount on future Happy Campers events. Like that's always the case. What's open right now for free? Finally, I have a, like a soft opening. I have opened the Stop Writing Alone Network, which is the Mighty Networks uh, page for Stop Writing Alone, where we can have all different types of uh, conversations about writing. And it's basically like a Facebook group. If you if you are familiar with how a Facebook group works, um, then you can head on over to Mighty Networks. You could just go, if you go to Mighty Networks online, they have a search bar. And if you type in Stop Writing Alone, it'll come up right there and you can ask to join. I am trying to figure out right now, because I literally just did this uh, earlier today, if you still have to, add, like if I still have to approve for you to join or if you can just join. I think you can just join if you get in there now. I think that's what I've accomplished. But uh, this is all new to me, so I'm learning as I go. It's been fun, but there's also, you know, we're learning the new platform. So um, that's happening. And then uh, probably by next week, I will have everything set up for the 52 Club within uh, the uh, within the, the Mighty Network. And that is going to be a, a year-long subscription of... Um, writing prompt parties all year round uh, every single week and all the different support that comes along with that. It's good stuff. I'm very excited, but I am excited that Girl Unplugged is out there. If you are a YA fan, if you have, um, yeah, if you like YA lit, if you like speculative fiction too, I should say, because that's that's really the whole gist of um of Girl Unplugged. I'm looking here and I'm what it's going to read to you, my official pitch of Girl Unplugged. Here it is. You've probably heard it before. Girl Unplugged. 16-year-old <laughs> Natalie Turner never knows what to say. Talia Turner is a popular blogger who's witty, insightful, and trending. You never know You'd never know they were the same person. When a solar storm causes a catastrophic collapse of power while she's on a class trip, Natalie is forced to confront the terrifying question. Who is she really? Natalie or Talia? So uh, when I was working with Austin, one of the fun things that came up is that one of the things that um, Natalie's best friend is always telling her in the book is to just be Talia, right? Because she is this shy doesn't know how to speak her mind person in person but when she's talia on her talia tales tumblr page uh she's just an open book right so a friend is always saying what would talia do what would talia do and austin was really pushing <laughs> that that should be the title of the book and even as i'm publishing every week and i'm putting up girl unplugged girl unplugged i'm like oh should i have called it what would talia do i don't know so um so yeah that's the book and we're up to chapter four right now and every single week you'll get a brand new chapter but also if you head over to storyhoarder.substack.com every single Friday you'll get new fiction uh, that's that runs the gamut if you are not a YA person my short fiction really goes all over the place I do different genres and different audiences um, I don't really have a pattern for releasing that every single week I literally just go into my hard drive and say hmm what haven't I shared let's send this one out into the world so um, that's what's going on there and also on the YouTube channel uh, which is N.V. Rivera. Uh, every single Friday, I'm sharing writing prompts with you so you too can be creating your own story hoard. So this Friday, you will get a brand new uh, writing prompt. But this entire week, 
All right, now, now it's Thursday, so you only have two days left. This entire week has been a free week of happy campers, so we've been having live meetings. Monday we did goals, and we had, uh, I think there were nine of us there sharing all our writing goals for the week, uh, and really just, but needling down on them and making sure that they were accomplishable and giving everybody feedback on what we heard and what we think uh, people can accomplish. Uh, and then... On Tuesday, we had our write-in, a one-hour write-in with uh, writing sprints, and we had, again, I think it was nine or ten people show up, and everybody got different bits of writing done. It wasn't a writing prompt situation. Write-ins are you bring your own work, and we get together and work together. So that was amazing. Wednesday night, we had a chat. And it was a very casual chat since there were new members. There was a lot of introductions going on, but we had, um, yeah, we ran the gamut on our chat on Wednesday. <laughs> so many different things of going on in our lives and uh, a little chat about uh, some writing stuff. But Thursday night, if you are hearing this in the morning, Thursday night, we will be talking about critique and critique partnerships and our plans for the spring. I think I mentioned that earlier in the episode. And Friday is our writing prompt party. So two more meetings to join in and get a taste of what it's like to be a happy camper. And uh, and then next uh, month, it'll be happening every single day uh, for the next uh, two months, March and April. So um, I will have in the show notes, as you can imagine, a bunch of links. The number one link that I want everybody to go to is the Stop Writing Alone Network. That's open now. It's free for everybody to join the network itself. And then in within that network, you will see the different groups that are being created, like the Happy Campers Group for the Spring, the 52 Club, Stop Reading Alone is in there. And there will be more coming along as the year goes on. But I will put in the uh, show notes as well as a separate link that's all for signing up for Happy Campers if that's something that you are interested in. And um, and everything else, the, the YouTube story hoarder, all of the things. But get out there, get your writing out there, make sure you're getting value for your writing. Don't just be giving everything out for free. Always uh, remember your value when you show up to the page and you, sh- and you share um, your story, your words, your talent with the world. But I want you to have a magnificent week. I do hope to see some of you uh, at these meetings. Have a great week. I will talk to you again next Thursday. Happy writing.